So, Marina, uh, what triggered your nutrition interest? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm really, um, I'm really excited to, to have this kind of discussion uh, with with you because we have the same same interests. And um, I thought it's nice to kind of share um, my experience, um, especially um, the fact that I kind of um, moved around. Um, I'm an immigrant. I was born and raised in Romania, but uh, I had the chance to travel. Um, to Spain and live there for a while and then move to Canada, uh, where I'm currently living. So I guess my interest um, triggered where my interest came. It's actually, I would go back to to, uh, to Spain um, when I realized after uh, after some, some years there where food is amazing and you kind of want to try this and bread and everything that my diet wasn't quite the best. Um, and uh, it wasn't something that I was happy with. Um, also, I had at a personal level not such a bad experience uh, and not, not such a great experience. So then I realized I wasn't taking care of my image, like also not only nutrition wise, but like how I was getting dressed. I was kind of getting comfortable into that uh, into that situation. Um, and also when I broke out my, with my ex boyfriend, um, it's kind of what triggered me, my image, right? My image in total. So this is where my interest came also with, with nutrition. Um, I start um, focusing my energy rather than the breakup and other personal stuff, uh, more into sports, um, more into nutrition. Um, again, just because I wasn't very happy with, with my image at the time. So I start, um, I start playing some tennis. I start uh, taking the bike a lot, and I, I kind of felt with a lot of energy and way better after after doing uh, some exercise. And then this kind of followed, and I said to myself, okay, you can't just um, go for sports and have energy without a good diet, right? Um, so let's look into a little bit more. So I kind of start investigating on my own and see what works for me, what does not, uh, because of course we all know that there's so many diets uh, out there and we don't know exactly which is the best place to start with or if that, that would work for you or not. Um, so I guess for me it was just trying to experience, see if, if something would uh, would follow into my guidelines, if would, um, it would help me to feel a bit better, uh, to feel with more energy so that I have more energy to keep going with my sports and everything. Um, and then I was trying to see exactly what group of elements affect my, 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 my body and whatnot. So I guess back in Spain, um, there was kind of a trying to figure out um, and see what best works for me. But I wasn't, um, I wasn't um, so much, I didn't put so much interest as I would put when I came back to Canada. And the reason for that is that um, when I moved from Europe to Canada, I started feeling after a while really bloated. My stomach wasn't um, how it's supposed to be. I think I lost uh, your uh, your image for a while. but uh, Yeah, I, I, I turned mine off because you're the image. Uh, that, and yeah. I have a separate yeah. way of recording mine. I thought it might improve yeah, our bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, let me uh, ask yeah. on your on your question of eating and exercise. Every day you eat something different, but every day you would exercise. So did you have a sense that you had more energy when you ate some things versus other things? I felt way better and lighter, for example, when I was, um, I'm not a big fan of veggies in general. So um, I was kind of trying to in incorporate that in my diet through soups or um, through, um, I was boiling vegetables and just eating them like this with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, being in Spain, olive oil is a big thing. Uh, they use olive oil in everything. So um, that's how I started to, to use it and incorporate more in my diet. So then I felt when I was eating that, uh, the veggies, I felt, um, and more salads, I felt uh, lighter um, and my stomach felt better, my digestion improved. Um, especially with me was when I was eating um, salad and broccoli, which is interesting because you would say, oh, broccoli for other people does not work because, you know, they, they're famous for producing some, some discomfort on our digestive system, but for me it worked perfectly. 
So um, I felt lighter and feeling lighter, I felt with more um, energy to exercise. Um, and the reason I say that is because when I moved here to Canada, uh, even sometimes um, I eat veggies and salad, I feel way heavier than like my stomach feels really bloated and heavier, even with the vegetables that I have here. And sometimes this kind of makes me not want to exercise. It's like, oh my God, since I'm, I'm having the stone in my stomach, right? It's just kind of like I'm, I'm carrying that when I'm biking. So, um, Yikes. yeah, so uh, it's not really fun. Um, so when I moved here to Canada, I kind of tried to see what's, what's happening and what triggered that bloating um, with nearly everything, like not only with um, vegetables or fruits, but even with protein or some other stuff. Um, that I've never had or have, right, um, if I'm going back to your decisions, right? So then this is where actually my interest really got in deep into and see, okay, what, what's going on, what's happening? Uh, I saw a lot of doctors, I went to naturopath, but they literally kind of didn't help because, to be honest, they don't, they, they can't experience what one experienced in their body because we're all so different, right? right. So then... It got my frustration. It was like, okay, if nobody can help me, I, I have to help myself. Right. So I started investigating, I started treating, and I started actually doing kind of um elimination diet. See yeah. what's what's triggering. And I'm I'm hopefully I'm on the right path. Um, but also it depends because what I noticed for me is that um even if I eat one day the same thing, uh, I don't feel the same every single day. And I think it's because also some other factors such as stress might come into place, yeah. um, metabolism, um, hours of sleep, which it's really yeah. important as well. Tell so, me, let me let me ask quickly, um, what's your day in terms of exercise? I remember you were running. Do you, do you go out every day and run in the morning and the evening? Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, I always try to put my exercise in the morning just because then I get lazy. Um, it depends. Um, I uh, I had some problem with my knee lately, so I'm actually combining. Uh, I uh, in general my exercise starts around I wake around five thirty and at six um, I'm actually start my exercise. Um, whether it's running uh, three days a week um, and or whether it's um, it's training with my personal trainer back in England, uh, which is uh, my training. It's sometimes a heat interval or strengthening um, or body weight um, exercises. And then weekends, um, bikes, uh, hikes, depending on the weather. Um, I tend to also bike to my uh, to my job um, when the weather permits. Because here right. in Vancouver, we all know that it's rain Vancouver. Right, right, right. So, um, and also combining with yoga, Pilates, um, so, every day I try to. so I remember you saying uh, some years ago, like a 5K is nothing. So, I mean, when you run, how far do you run? How long do you run? Yeah, I used to run. I used to participate in half marathons. Uh, not anymore. Um, I think the age is coming into place. Um, I had my, uh, lately I'm having some um, knee issues. Um, so probably that's that's one of the reasons I kind of tend to stick with six, six seven Ks. It depends on the, on the energy. Yeah. And also some back issues. That's why I kind of try to combine lately with Pilates or with yoga so that that pressure on when it doesn't come so often. Okay. Um, it's true that it's nothing for me, but it's still a good exercise. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so we have another question here. Um, so what's the best healthy habit for you? I think, um, yeah, I think actually hmm, exercising in the morning. It's one of the things um, because I actually and I think there's some studies that show that um, if you start your exercise in the morning, your uh, your metabolism works way better um, and uh, you can actually um, feel better. Uh, it clears the mind and especially if you do exercise outside. That's why I try to combine my running in the morning outside with my personal training here, of course, with my weights um, in, in my house. Um, because I feel that for me, when I go and exercise outside, I feel way better uh, because of the fresh air. 
yeah. um, my blood, I have my circulation way better, I, I, I feel with more energy, uh, my mind is clear, so this really helps me a lot. Yeah. Um, so that's one. And the second one, I tend to not eat anything after, like, my last dinner, it's around 7 at the latest, latest. Uh, but in general, I tend to finish my dinner around 5, 6, so that I can have 4 hours up until I go to bed, so that I can actually digest. Yeah. Um, and the third one, which they say is the charm, um, I tend not to eat uh, carbs uh, during night. I always take my carbs in the morning for energy, a bit of quinoa, or a bit of uh, bread or whatever that might be. But uh, if I take some carbs, it's always in the morning for me. Okay. Yeah, I've heard, I've been reading books and listening to podcasts about the importance of time-restricted eating, that uh, your body, you need five or six or eight hours to digest food and then rest your organs and all that stuff. So having a long window between when you finish and dinner and start in the morning. Um We've uh, discussed some before the, uh, you know, the ongoing battles over low carb versus low fat versus this versus that. So one question, what's your opinion and experience with this like low carb diet? Some people go keto, which is a little more extreme or carnivore, but low carb is sort of the, the first step. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, as you as as you mentioned, there's so many there's so many studies out there, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not pretend to be, and I don't want to give any nutrition advice. The only thing I'd like to talk uh, it's about my experience, as you mentioned, right, and what worked for me. And I guess for a woman, um, it's a little bit harder um, a low carb diet because yes, it's true that um, you get excited because you suddenly lose a lot of weight. Uh, but that's also um, because um, you, the fact that you don't have um, those, uh, and that's uh, that's something that some, what I'm saying right now is because of some discussion I had with a dietitian actually and doctors, is that um, taking out the carbs in general, carbs do retain more water and salt, so then you feel more puffy, a little bit heavier. But once you get rid of those ones. And when I say carbs, I talk about carbs um, like rice, quinoa, bread. I'm not talking because we do, we still eat carbs. Um, we have carbs in fruits. We have carbs in vegetables, but they're another yeah. type of carbs, right? right. So um, I just want to stress that when right. I'm talking about carbs, that's what I refer. Um, uh, suddenly you lose a lot of weight just because you don't retain so much water, but also it's the body water, right? And the salt. Um, that's what I was advised by doctors. Right. But for me, is it's true that you can get excited and say, yes, I lost some weight. Uh, but then there's some health issues. I do suffer of thyroid. Um, so um, I have to be really, really, my situation is very delicate and I have to be very careful of my hormones and the balance so right. i always try to work with an endocrinologist on this side of a thing but when i try the low carb diet for me it was not so much about losing weight for me it was um just because of my metabolism it's really slow um just to keep my hormones um on balance so are you uh, holding know, are you holding your microphone in your hand and rubbing it I, back and I'm forth holding i'm just holding it a bit because i do have some issue uh with um oh i do have some issue with a uh, speaker sometimes so okay i just want to make sure that um okay that, uh, yeah. sounds okay but i could um, hear a little bit yeah oh, oh no okay. it's better okay yeah, yeah i had some issues so that's yeah. right um i had some health issues uh after i did that and I thought it's just a coincidence, uh, but um, I tried several times and um, it happened the same thing. Um, I, 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 it's something very personal, I don't want to talk what happened, yeah. but um, obviously it affects me as a, as a woman, right? Um, right? And it happened three or four times exactly at the point where I took out my carbs. Yeah. Um, so I personally don't recommend for myself um, because it right. did not work and because uh, of my thyroid problem. Where again, yeah. each each one of us, it's different. People are I different. Think... Yeah, and I, as I've mentioned before, the Nina Teicholz, when she talks about low carb, she says, well, this is just what Americans ate up until 1980. They had, they, they had carbs in their diet, but just less. When the government pushed low fat, that boosted the carbs in the average diet. Of course, it also 
uh, boosted processed food and sugar and so forth. So there's so many moving parts, it's hard to tell, you know, which is which and everyone's different, so. Exactly. And then it's also something that I notice for me, it's, I always say, um, and maybe that would be something that I would always encourage people like me that are interested in this and they suffer from this. Try your diet, work of course with also with a, or with a nutritionist or with a dietitian or with a, with a doctor, but also be mindful that if something does not work for you, you don't have to always say oh but that was a research yeah right. okay but uh we're all different right, right. so um might not work for you and meanwhile you always feel good uh, you're you're using a limit in everything i always say if you want to have a glass of wine just have it but have a limit right rather than three right. glasses of wine or the fourth bottle just right. have one but then also try to um when when you go on a diet uh, my advice here is also to check your health in terms of like blood tests and all those things to make sure that you don't miss any nutrient nutrients any vitamins so that would be my yeah I think right. something that i would always uh, advocate for um, yeah so this seems to be a helpful overview we've gone through a number of uh, questions discussions of nutrition and sort of your story and the goal was to try and start this nutrition podcast, starting with sort of your questions and issues. And and one of the things you mentioned in our conversations is that you've you've changed places. And so the food in the U.S., the the milk or not the U.S., the Canada and the West, the the milk, the food, the stuff in the store is sort of different than what you had in Spain. Maybe different than Romania. Some people have said the microbiome shifts as we move from place to place. So in a sense, for for migrants, for people who, you know, you're halfway across the world from where you started and the food is different. And yeah, so you're you're dealing with some of those issues as well. Yeah, exactly. And I always like to end for put on uh, this example, right? When I uh, I can't have meat here, I always go with oat milk. Uh, but when I go to Europe, people are laughing at me because I I forget that I, I go to Europe and I'll say, oh, can I have a coffee with a bit of oat milk? And they look at me kind of like, because it's not so popular, right? Of course you're fine, but it's not so popular. And then one day I was in my mom's house and I'm like, I'm actually curious because I always tend to look at the ingredients. So I took the bottle, uh, the milk, um, and I switched around and I looked at the ingredients and I noticed that the sugar percentage is three grams. And then when I came here to Canada, I was like, I'm going to look um, how much it's here. And the same percentage of fat and um, it was 15. So from yeah. 3 to 15 grams. So I'm like, that might be also an issue, right? And right. that's why I feel so bloated. I feel so heavy. I feel with so much yeah. retention of water, let's say, which is one of the ongoing problems for, for me. Yeah. So obviously there's some differences. And um, Yeah, and lactose, they, they label lactose as a sugar. Some people are lactose intolerant and there's different amounts, northern European cows versus southern this, that. So yeah, I, I spent, after you mentioned this, I spent a bunch of time trying to research the amount of sugar in European milk and I couldn't find heads or tails of it. Just because I, the labeling was different, the rules are different, and so forth. But, you know, I, and I have talking to a number of people who've come from different countries in Europe, particularly Eastern Europe. I ask them what they miss about where they came from. And they say the dairy products, the milk, the ice cream, the cream, because each valley has got different grass, different cows, and different traditions. Yeah, so, but it's interesting that uh, in our digestive system, you know, doesn't respond the same way to very different foods. Exactly. And I would add here on the list of bread and people who might, who might listen to this podcast, they will be like, oh my God, no, that's, that's, you know, I have to lose weight or something. And I would, in my opinion, I would say in the morning, uh, if you ask a European dietitian, if you ask a European doctor, they would actually say, please do go with bread. And you know, what's funny is that actually they always say white bread and not multigrain because it's way less processed and yeah. i was very happy to learn that i, I didn't know that my, i was like oh no it should be multigrain and they're like no it's way more processed i was shocked to find that stuff out i've got this book a grain brain about and i always thought that white bread was created you know for soldiers in world war ii but then i find out that ancient rome was having a competition with like other countries like who's got the whitest bread so it's a bit of a mystery about um 
grain and nutrition and there's huge battles on all this stuff but it's a, it's an exploration and i maybe to sum up it's been good talking to you about these things there's a shelf full of books and people with different views and um n equals one is the key thing you're the, you're the example of one it's just you you have your own history microbiome genetics and so that's a discovery process what food what exercise what time to eat what things work for you and it's going to be different for me and anybody else exactly and i would be uh happy to hear some other story or your story uh yep. whenever you might want to share that next time next time okay <laughs> next time thank you very much marina thank you thank you <laughs> bye Greg. okay bye-bye bye-bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye. <laughs>